Imagine waking up and not being able to find the words to talk to your family or friends. For many, this is the reality of life after stroke. Every two seconds, someone in the world will have a stroke for the first time. That's 90 people by the time I finish this talk. Stroke, due to bleeding in the brain, also known as hemorrhage, is the most devastating and least treatable type of stroke. Within one month of the hemorrhage, over 40% of patients will have died, and of those that survive, over half will be left dependent on family members or carers as a result of the long-term consequences. One of those consequences might be cognitive impairment. Cognitive impairment is an umbrella term for a range of symptoms which can affect our memory, our thinking abilities, or even our ability to produce or understand speech. Now, stroke and cognitive impairment are closely related. However, most research in this area has tended to focus on patients who suffered an ischemic stroke, which is where a clot forms and blocks of blood supply to part of the brain. This is where my PhD comes in. Survivors of stroke due to hemorrhage were given the opportunity to take part in a detailed assessment of their cognition at 6 and 12 months after their stroke. In addition to simply looking at the frequency of cognitive problems, participants were also given the chance to have an MRI scan of their brain, which we can use alongside their past medical history to look for potential risk factors. However, this isn't the full story. Very little is actually known about what diminished cognitive function means to someone that survived a stroke. As such, I decided to carry out interviews with a subgroup of participants to find out whether their cognitive problems interfered with their day-to-day -day lives. What I found was that, despite many of the participants having other problems, for example, with their mobility or mood, it was the cognitive impairment that was often the biggest thing to happen to them. Now, no matter whether the participant was having to relearn how to say their wife and kids' names, or in one case, learn the skills needed to get back behind their DJ decks, it all took hard work, determination, and a really good support network. However, not everybody has this. Although rehabilitation services in the community were available for most, many of the participants simply didn't find this enough. We need to do better. Patients need to feel empowered through tailored support and improved rehabilitation if we're to get them back to doing the things that they love. This is why research like this is so important. I am hopeful that we can use this type of information to develop services so that more people can find their voice and get back on their feet after stroke. Thank you.